Hello, and welcome back to my channel. This video is an update about my hand project, along with telling you about my experience using the FL Sun T1 Pro that was sent to me a couple weeks ago. But first, let me tell you about what's going on with my project. About four years ago, a guy named Chris reached out to me on Instagram, inquiring if I could build him a partial hand device similar to one that I was using and demonstrating in my videos. At the time, I was still designing super bespoke hands that were way too complicated for anyone but myself to use on the daily basis. Think back to when I had the super cool clockwork grip pattern selector. Looking back, it was an engineering marvel, and it would make an awesome sound when I'd switch from pattern to pattern. I loved the action of the mechanism, but it was way too super complicated to be reliable out in the world for anyone but myself. So, sadly at that time, it was looking like no new hand for Chris. I didn't feel the design was anywhere near reliable enough for someone else to be relying on it as their daily driver. He took my response well, and I said I'd keep his number and let him know when I had something that might be more suitable for his needs. Well, a couple of years and many, many designs later, I finally had something that I thought would be reliable and durable enough for someone besides myself to rely on. So I decided to reach out to him and see if he had found something that met his needs or if he still needed a device. After a couple of emails and a Zoom, he was getting pretty excited to try out what I had designed. And even better, with the funds that I received from the OSV Fellowship Grant, most of the costs involved to build him something could be subsidized. Of course, the best laid plans always come with some issues. The first issue, he lives in Florida, while I live in Oregon. But that's okay, if you've been following along with where I've been trying to go with this project, then you know that the idea was to make the device available as a DIY kit where the end user assembles and fits the device to their residual limb. So it's really not that huge of an issue that he lives all the way across the country as long as his residual limb truly is similar in size and shape to that of my own. That's where the first real hitch began to rear its ugly head. Even though we had talked about what his hand looked like, and he said that it fit pretty okay in the 3D printed check socket, the pictures that he sent me told a completely different story. Sure, it fit, but he didn't have the same width or mass to his residual limb that I do with mine. Also, he didn't have anywhere near the same amount of mobility with his thumb that I do. Well, shoot, that's going to pose a little bit of an issue. So I asked him if he had any plans in the near future to be in the Pacific Northwest where we could meet up and also so he could try on either my current device or an earlier version of this same device. As fortune would have it, he was going to be in Denver doing a thing with his dad sometime around the first week in December. I was like, awesome. If you're going to be most of the way across the country anyway, why not catch a flight here and spend the day with me? There are several flights a day from Denver to Medford and from Medford back to Denver. So we hatched the plan where he would catch the morning flight in and the late evening flight back. Spend the day with me, try out the device, and see if it was going to be able to do most everything that he had envisioned it would. He liked the idea and booked his flights. So after nearly four years of messaging, we finally got to meet each other in real life and he got to try on my device and see what it was like to have fingers again. He was super pleased with what my device was capable of and excited about building one of his own. Although now it was super obvious that his residual limb was not going to work with the original kit form of my device. Even though he was able to fit into the check socket, his residual limb was quite a bit more narrow and a little bit shorter than my residual limb. The biggest issue was that his residual limb was only wide enough to accommodate three mechanical fingers. Well, that is less than optimal. But after being in contact for so long and him making the effort to come out to the shop to meet me in real life, I wasn't about to turn him away now. So I started working on a plan to redesign the device in a way that would require the fewest number of custom parts in order to accommodate his situation. Right now, the plan involves modifying the mounting rails, the winder, and the splay mechanism. What I'm going to do is remove the index finger placement on the top and bottom mounting rails and move the index middle and ring finger down one position, eliminating the pinky finger itself. But since now I'm doing three fingers on the hand, I need to get rid of the index middle whiffle tree slider, 
redesign the upper and lower mounting plates on the winder assembly, and add a roller to them in order to get the chain to line up with the new position of the index finger. The splay linkage also gets a new driver plate and mid-link for the index so that the ratios all stay the same when the fingers open and close. Something that we also talked about, and I think I'm going to do with all of these kits, is eliminate the grip pattern selector feature on this device. It creates too much maintenance, and it can get a little bit fidgety. Also, as cool as it is, I found that I just don't use this feature enough to justify including it in these builds. I use Splay all the time, and I found that it doesn't require much, if anything, for maintenance. It is super reliable. And that's what you want with a device that you use on the daily. Something that you can count on 100% and don't need to spend a pile of time cleaning or maintaining. Just put it on and go about your day. So that's where we are with the project and Chris. I also placed a pretty big order for fingers and winder assemblies with PCBWay. I should be receiving those parts somewhere around the first week of January. I'll probably do a live as I'm packing them into kits. So there was one last thing that happened with Chris's trip. While he was at the shop, I took the opportunity to scan his residual limb with my Creality Ferret Pro scanner, cast his palm in Alumilite silicone putty, and print that scan into a solid model. To do that, I used my T1 Pro that my rep from FL Sun sent me in about that same time frame. The T1 Pro is a smaller version of the S1 Pro that I tried last month. There are several differences between the S1 Pro and the T1 Pro. First off, the T1 Pro comes flat packed and needs to be assembled. While the S1 Pro comes fully assembled and with the exception of adding the doors is ready to go right out of the box. The process is well documented and goes together pretty easily. As for motors, the S1 Pro uses closed loop hybrid servo stepper motors while the T1 Pro uses conventional stepper motors. The T1 Pro has a build volume of 260 by 330 where the S1 Pro has a build volume of 320 by 430, nearly double the build volume. Both printers are network connected and have cameras to monitor the print progress through the FL Sun World cell phone app. Currently, it's only available for Android devices, and at this time, it's not available in the Play Store, so you're going to need to sideload the APK from their website. The T1 Pro's heated build plate is all or nothing, while the S1 Pro's build plate is divided into radial segments. This means that the machine only heats up the areas that are actually being printed on. This theoretically saves both time and energy, saving the world by printing plastic widgets destined for the landfill. The interface of the T1 Pro is much smaller and feels a little bit crowded compared to the one on the S1 Pro. Both machines have fully enclosed LED lit cabinets with linear rails and timing belts for the motion. Although the S1 Pro has considerably more lighting in its cabinet. Now for the filament. For the S1 Pro, the filament is kept in its own separate heated chamber with a built-in scale that measures the approximate amount of filament left on the spool. From there, the filament travels through a PTFE tube down to the printhead. While with the T1 Pro, the filament simply hangs from a couple of brackets mounted to the ceiling of the machine and is supposed to feed through the holes in the back of these two clips, then through a short piece of PTFE tube into the extruder. Let me stop right here and talk a little bit more about this feature. My experience is when I ran the filament through the holes in these clips and printed something taller than about 220 millimeters, the filament would bind and stop feeding, causing taller prints to fail. What I did to remedy this awesomeness was design and print a bracket that I double sided sticky tape to the ceiling panel of the machine, centered with the spool holder, and positioned about one inch away from the door. This bracket holds one end of a 21 inch long piece of PTFE tube that then connects to a coupler and into the short piece of tubing that's part of the extruder. Adding this bracket and tubing mimics the way the filament is held in the S1 Pro. For me, this modification fixed the issue I was having with the filament binding with taller prints, and I was able to successfully print this 282 millimeter tall model of Chris's forearm and hand. This printer isn't as fast as the S1 Pro. The T1 Pro has a maximum speed of 1000 millimeters per second versus the 1200 millimeters per second of the S1 Pro. 
which means that a Benchy takes closer to 10 minutes to print compared to just under 8 minutes with the S1 Pro. Although I have to say, the extra 2 minutes of the print from the T1 Pro does make for a nicer looking Benchy. So far, after adding the filament bracket and the PTFE tubing to the printer, it looks like it's a pretty decent machine. Although I do not have a pile of time printing with this machine yet, so that statement is subject to change. And I'll let you know if I start seeing anything weird as I get more time on either one of these machines. If you're looking to pick up one of these high-speed Delta machines, and you have both the space and funds for it, I would definitely choose the S1 Pro over the T1 Pro. It comes fully assembled and just feels a bit more finished. But if space and price are a deciding factor for you, maybe consider the T1 Pro. Just know that you will need to assemble it and probably do something with the way that the filament gets into the extruder. I think both of these machines are on sale right now for the end of the year, so if you're in the market for a Delta style printer, maybe check them out. There will be a link for the bracket that I'm using with the T1 Pro in the description. Let me know what you think about the progress that I've been able to make on the device that I'm building for Chris, or if you have any questions about the printers that FL Sun recently has sent to me, leave me a comment in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. You don't think I'd have had like a Luke Skywalker arm that just looked like an actual hand? No metal parts on the outside? Like, right? I mean, it's just, oh, it killed me. Absolutely killed me. Like, I would have streamlined it a lot thinner. I would have made it <laughs> If so it was going to be. <laughs> but I'm just over here in the stage of making it happen. <laughs>